Toyota and Lexus make much about their strong line of hybrid vehicles, but the truth is that General Motors has the most hybrids on the road. But granted, most of them are what you would call a mild hybrid, which means that they use a gasoline engine most of the time with an electric assist. The kind used by Toyota, Ford and Nissan has the ability to start just on electric power and then drive with gas and electric combined. So GM has introduced their two-mode hybrid system, which essentially combines the two systems into one. It's available on the GM full-size pickup trucks, the Chevy Tahoe, the Cadillac Escalade, and this GMC Yukon. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on the styling because we've actually reviewed the Chevy version of this called the Tahoe, and it really is all about the drive, but there are a few things we do want to point out. The hybrid Yukon is very easily spotted. It has hybrid batches all over it, on the front and back window, all the way down the side, and smaller green hybrid touches abound. If that isn't clue enough, the two-mode version has a unique front chin spoiler for better aerodynamics. We do have a criticism of this Yukon. It's with all the Yukons, not just the hybrid. It's absolutely massive on the outside, but when you open up the cargo area, it's not that big. The rear seats don't fold into the floor, so the cargo area doesn't have the same kind of configurations as the GMC Acadia crossover has, for example. The third row of seats is rather small and hard to get into, and once again, the Acadia offers a better option. Leather seats come standard, and they are heated, but they don't offer much lateral support when cornering. On the two-mode system, navigation comes standard, and the screen acts as a monitor for the hybrid system. The gauges behind the steering wheel also provide important information for the two-mode system. Now, Lacey, you might remember when we did a review of the Tahoe when it first came out years ago, and both of us were very impressed with how well it rode, how they cleaned up the inside. That was really a major turning point for General Motors in the renaissance of their brands, and all of that is still true today. When you first start out in the two mode, it feels very similar to the Toyota system. There's no help at all from the gasoline engine. Now we tried really hard, but that doesn't last very long before the gasoline engine does kick in and then you're running on both systems. Another similarity to the Toyota models is the smooth and seamless transition of power that comes when the gasoline engine starts up. It's almost undetectable. After the gasoline engine starts to run, there's absolutely no way to really tell if there's any other magic going on, but there is. You see, the reason they call it two mode is because it has the ability to provide electric power to this big truck when it's driving at higher speeds. The big six liter V8 has what is called active fuel management, allowing half of the cylinders to switch off when the truck is just cruising along. Usually the first hint of extra load throws all eight cylinders back into action, but with the electric assist, the engine can stay running on four cylinders a little bit longer. This is the magic that gives the Yukon up to 25% better fuel consumption. I think the big trucks are starting to grow on me. I like that with the Yukon, you're sitting up nice and high, so you've got a very commanding view of the road. The steering is still light but responsive. For such a big truck, it takes corners really well. But I think my favorite thing is the fact that you've now got a hybrid vehicle, so the interior is just unbelievably quiet. Well, the power steering is electric. It isn't hydraulic and it has a light feel, which is very typical of hybrids, but it isn't as numb feeling as some other hybrids. Same thing for the brakes. You put your foot on the brakes, it's got a harder pedal feel than a typical gasoline version of this truck, but it doesn't have that grabby quality that you get from many other hybrids. You know, this whole two-mode system in general is very seamless and refined. It's as good and as smooth as any other hybrid we've driven in the market. This two-mode is a joint venture between General Motors, Chrysler, Mercedes, and BMW, so look for two modes in their products as well. Even though there is a big 6-liter V8 under the hood, this truck feels very sedate, and the driving style is relaxed. You are not in a rush to go anywhere, and that also helps with fuel consumption. On the plus side, on the freeway, the engine is so quiet because the revs are ticking over at under 2,000 RPM. So the problem with this two mode is when you're driving along in stop and go traffic, we're doing about 15 kilometers an hour here, and you want to make a quick lane change and get some power instantly. You put your foot into it, first it tries electric, and then it goes to the gasoline engine, and then it comes on with a big swoosh before you actually get the power delivery. So there's a little bit of a delay that you have to adjust to, but when you drive knowing that in the back of your mind, you do make the adjustment. 
The two modes starts at just over $68,000 and R1 is 73 grand. Sure, there are many advancements in this vehicle, but it's expensive. What do you think? Well, Zach, I'll answer that question in just a minute. I like the electric steering. It's a little bit lighter feel, and that really appeals to me. And for being such a big truck, it does have really great handling. And that two-mode system is fantastic, again, for such a big vehicle. It does get pretty good fuel economy. But on the downside, it's got really tiny buttons on the front console, so if you're wearing gloves in the wintertime, it's going to be really hard to work them. And as we mentioned before, for such a big truck, there's actually not a lot of room, especially when you get into that third row of seats. And the price. I have to be honest, I just think there are a lot of other vehicles out there that are a lot less, and you still get a pretty good vehicle. Now, the thing about this vehicle, it's a two-mode system developed with BMW, Mercedes, and Chrysler, but a lot of the heavy lifting was done in Detroit, and you have to hand it to General Motors for their first two-mode system, the first one in the world, really. It delivers, and it is very smooth, and I would put this hybrid system up against many of the Japanese for the refinement and the way they've been able to pull it off. And Lacey mentioned the handling. I like the smoothness and the quietness of this, and if you're somebody that appreciates a sort of a luxury feel, the two-mode makes a very nice vehicle even better. On the downside, it's a bit too laid back for me. If you're somebody who likes a little bit of pizzazz, this isn't the vehicle. It's a good cruising vehicle, but it isn't very exciting to drive. I think it would be better utilized in a crossover like the GMC Acadia, which is such a wonderful vehicle. This is really limiting because full-size trucks really are not selling that well, and then you add on the expensive two-mode system, and it really is a small market. It would be much better in a crossover, and I agree with you. It's kind of spendy. Now, back to the small buttons. You, you, you don't have big sausage fingers. What's wrong? I'm number one. <laughs> For complete specs, go to our website at drivingtelevision.com. After the break, this week's used car report, the Toyota RAV4. Looking for a way to improve your fuel efficiency? Lacey checks out gasoline additives. And men, get out your bell bottoms and grow those mustaches. Because the Challenger is back.